I am very, very, very privileged to welcome our next guest for today, our game changer of the day for today. Uh, she's smiling. She's like, huh? Me, game changing. Um, <laughs> tell me. Talk. Oh yeah, my in God, the, the excitement. The, <laughs> what excitement? Good morning. Morning. Tell me, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I feel like you are such. You're a friend to 99 FM. I feel like you're just at home. Yeah, no, I am. But it's been quite actually. It's been a long time. Hey, I actually miss. Um, uh, well, we're in a pandemic. Yeah. That's why. Oh shit. Let's let's start there. How how have you been? Dealing personally, personally now, sell me personally at home. How have you been uh, dealing, uh, handling the pandemic? Um, home. Okay, number one, actually, I think uh, it was actually a very, 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 very great chance to mm -hmm. bond um, with my children. You know, mm -hmm. and, you know, because we we have kids and we we hardly have time, and yeah. they, uh, we really, really bonded, like extremely bonded. Yeah. Um, but then also. Uh, I think I, I already accepted, uh, you know, the whole pandemic situation. We, mm. we have looked for option to continue living and not just give up or mm. demor be demoralized mm. or in any sort of way. So, um, yeah, no, I think technically you, I have been fine. You've been fine. Yes. Now, tell me you are a communications consultant, a media and communications practitioner, a well-known research specialist. I don't know many things that you don't do. Um, um, you've been a force behind some of the biggest entertainment brands in Namibia, including the one, the only Kasi Vibe. Hey, uh. ne? Now tell us where, where your passion for entrepreneurship really stems from. Where is the beginning? Hey, the beginning. Yeah. I used to sell lemons now from my house, uh. you know, growing up with your grandmother. Mm. I was privileged, um, to grow up in an environment that was really very conducive, you know, uh, we had a lot of beautiful trees, mm. you know, in the yard, and well, it was just my grandmother and I, mm. and um, so if you know a tree would bloom, it really like it would really grow. So mm. we had so much to offer, but mm. obviously, what type bills also had to be paid for. So. Mm. I, at least I was allowed to sell. Um, yeah. Not that I was giving it over. It was still my money at the end of the day. Yeah. But, you know, I had to run around. I always had to make sure every Saturday morning I wake up and I to water the plants. Yeah. You know? So I think that's where it all started. Most kids don't, don't you know, when they're growing up, it's to play on the trees, not to, <laughs> not to turn the trees into business. Yeah. No, well, uh, those trees were not that conducive to play on. Uh -huh. Not at all. Under the three years, you could sit there. I would sit there and whatnot. But yeah. I think because we also had, yeah, we just had, so I think it started basically there. So we'd sell whatever season, if it's lemons, guavas, whatnot, then mm -hmm. that's how it started. Then we would sell, then I would sell it. And then it moved on to packets of chips. Mm. And yeah, I think so it is. I, but I think it's been a drive within me. So mm. it came finished high school after high school try, got a job here and there but then at mm -hmm. the end of the day it was also a thing of okay let me rather also just do this yeah. you know it's something that i have a passion for like mostly also my jobs or the type of jobs that i was doing mm -hmm. and the type of entrepreneurship mm -hmm. angles that I, i'm taking mm -hmm. it's, it, i have learned and curved from that as well mm. so so how do you like in the midst of all the madness and everything that you've been doing in the past few years how do you stay on top of your game uh, I just I learn and I read a lot yeah, <laughs> yeah basically I learn from the experiences of whatever I do mm. and then on top of that I literally just read and I observe mm -hmm. a lot as well and as you can as you mentioned earlier you, you mentioned research mm -hmm. um, somewhere yeah. at the beginning yeah I do a lot of research mm. yeah so that uh, so it plays a, a really one thing is that we miss is Research plays a very big role in a lot of things, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in a lot of projects, whatever project you try to do or get up with, I know that research really plays a very, very big role. And mm -hmm. that's one thing that a lot of us um, underestimate. Mm -hmm. So half your business, well, I don't want to say half, but a lot of your business is done before it's even started uh, uh, in many ways, because you research, you do all these things. Yeah. And by the time you are at block A, you've already yeah. put in work already. Yeah, basically. Um, so there's, there are certain things that obviously we can research and we can foreshadow. Mm. There's a little something called COVID-19 that a lot of people didn't foreshadow. I know. Um, how was your business affected by the pandemic? And what was, what was the biggest lesson learned? 
Um, basically, it was affected badly. Um, I mean, that like specifically the Kasi Vibe Festival, mm-hmm. the business model is made in such a way that it depends on um, crowds. Mm-hmm. So now, wow, mm-hmm. COVID, no crowds. Nothing. <laughs> Zero buttons. Yes, so nothing is happening <laughs> there. But um, it's not, it was, we just, yes, we could not host the festival mm-hmm. itself in, in terms but there were other projects for example that we're still brewing under mm-hmm. the Kasivai brand mm-hmm. of which we will be um, hosting as of April mm. but that can still um, the Kasivai brand will still be visible mm-hmm. for, for starters and they definitely will be giving back to the community mm-hmm. and will still be around till where we're able to still host mm. the event okay. so basically what we have learned is that yes as much as it's crowds it's not it does not mean it should limit you mm-hmm. um, to just that. Yeah. yeah. And I remember as, as soon as, like, um, the first wave hit, uh, you guys were, were, were the first yeah, to jump, to jump onto the on live the digital, live stream. Digital streaming and, and yeah. the live streaming. Yeah, we actually did that immediately after that because, I mean, we had the, 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 the music... Uh, or, shows yeah. and then we also had the drive through yes. cinema yes. that we also did um so i mean we did those projects mm-hmm. under that after that mm-hmm. and we're still going to do other projects mm-hmm. <laughs> come from april obviously yeah. i can't say much yeah, right yeah, now. No, no. but i mean uh, we we it's, uh, we we i think also right now i think you just need to find ways on how to be able to to do things you know mm-hmm. like I, I was telling a friend yesterday that I don't understand why we some of the lives we have to put on hold mm. we need to live to learn how to live with mm. COVID I mean who says if COVID is going to be around for the next 10 years that's true are we going to be on lockdown forever mm. very true and and like you're saying we need to live in the new normal yes um, in many ways but what, what do you think is, is the challenge for many businesses but specifically entertainment businesses and entertainers and mm. um what do you think is the challenge to do things differently? What what are a lot of people lacking? Um, I think, uh, okay, one thing is, um, I know, um, for example, with entertainment, mm-hmm. um, it also requires, for example, um, sponsorship and support, especially from the corporate industry. Mm-hmm. So the corporate industry also does not really want to support mm-hmm. events because they feel oh wow we cannot associate because what if and this break but like i said we need to learn how to live we need to work together and learn how to live with mm-hmm. this thing mm-hmm. so and i know for a fact that the entertainment industry is hit very 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 hard mm-hmm. um especially with our government mm-hmm. I, I i i just feel they have neglected that mm-hmm. part you know everything else wow well, yeah and there's regulations abc mm-hmm. you can have abcd mm-hmm. but unfortunately i cannot have festival in two hours i cannot have a music show in two hours yeah i like music and also it will really not make economical sense for yeah. me to have any of those with 50 people yeah you know mm. so it's it's really yeah so yeah, i know the challenges are, are many but um i think like you said you said something very important it's it's l- learning how to live through um and navigate through the new normal and it all really goes back to what we said in the beginning that research now you have to look at how people have done things differently in the past and maybe other industries that you thought were so far from you Mm. and say that that i'll never be able to do those Mm. things Mm. because i mean i'm I'm on this side of the world yeah and then now you have to take a few uh notes from someone else's Mm. page Page, here and there um just lastly, what, what is your, your parting words of, of encouragement for Namibians out there? It, it's tough. People are, are going through the motions. Yeah, no, Some no, people yeah. are thriving. Like you said, it, it's, it's, um, it's beautiful depending on where you're sitting in terms of some people have now have the luxury of time to sit and reflect and do different things. Other people, the financial uh, restraints that they're going through now don't give them the ability to sit and and have that time so it's it's a bit of, it's bittersweet depending on where you're sitting from mm. but what's your words of encouragement for namibians out there um number one very very important we need to find ways how to mm. live with this yeah. <laughs> um with the pandemic and basically to just not don't give up mm-hmm. uh, basically at this point no one should give up um I, I, I totally don't want to say I, I, I'm in these people's shoes because I know a lot of people have lost jobs, you mm. know, streams of income, and you feel you're oppressed. But if you have to cut down on expenses or whatnot, try mm. to do that. Try to do research to see how, other, for example, in other countries, how people are, are going about doing whatever you're doing differently and mm. they're still, you know, um, thriving. Mm-hmm. 
but it's just i think this is also somehow a test and also an eye opener the pandemic mm. so uh, just do your best you can yeah 100 percent. thank you so much for this is the first time you're on the kingdom actually yeah I think. it is ne? yeah i've not been here on the kingdom on the kingdom <laughs> yeah no no thank you so much for joining me in many ways you're our game change of the day um you guys thank have you. have really done a lot the past few years yeah. um cassie vibe and everything else the garden and everything else you guys have been doing have really not just helping the community in terms of creating employment mm. and and just creating a culture of, of togetherness and um the fact that you're continuing that as much as we need to stay apart yeah. social distancing there are many ways we still need to come together yeah. to fight this thing and for that reason you are our game changer of the oh, day i'm honored <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much that is tell me it's um if you don't know now you know and if if you know you know if you don't know you better get to know mm. because come April good things are coming. Uh, definitely. <laughs> there you have it. Let's dive back into the kingdom. Um we're going